Roku wants to inject even more ads into your TV watching, and Sunbird returns. This is Mac Voices. Today's Mac Voices is supported by Mac Voices After Dark. What happens before the show starts and after we sign off? Informative, fun, and completely off-script conversations. That's what. Mac Voices After Dark is an exclusive benefit for our Patreon subscribers. Sign up now at patreon.com slash macvoices. Okay, Mark, you asked for it, you got it. We have uh, Roku going even over the ads, over even the, farther yeah. over the edge. So if, if folks, if you didn't see this, they Roku has apparently devised a technology that can drop ads in through your HDMI input directly. And the the way I read the article, they could do it at will. So just allow me, you know, so it's it's unclear exactly what Roku has. I mean, they filed for in a patent and the patent laws are so wide open. They could have a, you know, a, a prototype or a finished product ready to go, or they could just have an idea. And it really wasn't clear in, in the story that, uh, or at least the one I read, where on that pole it is. But the offensive thing is they're thinking that, okay, you know, they, they have the ability to steal uh, what they say, uh, you know, when it, during periods of inactivity, whatever those are, uh, that they can display ads on, you know, your TV screen or monitor, you know, through an HDMI port, you know, so, uh, you know, I think, um, what do I think? You know, I think this is, uh, I, I think this is a company that's losing money and they're trying and they realize, OK, in the capitalist system, they're losing money. What happens? They they either crash and burn or somebody acquires them and, you know, they all you know, they all get shown the door uh, by the new owner. And so they're looks like they're trying to figure out any possible way that they can to, uh, you know, raise money off of uh, their install base. and. I don't have a Roku device, but uh, I would say if you know, the thought of you know them taking control and slapping up ads you know uh, on your TV screen offends you, uh, just say no and uh, rec- you know dump it and go somewhere else. Jeff, you were the one that dropped this into our Slack. Um, I know you have thoughts. What a shock! Okay. <laughs> So Roku's kind of on a tear here with uh, with finding ways to generate revenue that, at least on paper, look good for them, but won't make end users happy. And mm-hmm. uh, and so the idea behind this patent, as I'm as I've read it, is that what they would do if you buy a Roku television and it has this technology in it, you can plug in other devices to it um, uh, into HDMI. So like, let, let's say, just as an example, you have an Apple TV that you want to use instead of the, the built-in Apple TV app on the Roku. So plug it into an HDMI port. You're watching some show on on uh, Apple, Apple TV+. Yeah. Plus. You pause it. And now uh, an ad that Roku has sold takes over the screen. When you hit play, the Roku ad disappears, and it takes you back to to what Apple TV was feeding to your television. And uh, and I can see where, for at least a percentage of television viewers that would buy a Roku te- TV, mm-hmm. the idea that it doesn't matter what I've plugged in. Suddenly, anything can become the uh, the platform for showing me ads. Uh, would be very distasteful. Uh, that, but at the same time, there's a lot of people that would buy a television like this because they want an all-in-one experience. So uh, they're, they're willing to use whatever apps are on there already. So they would be seeing ads regardless because that's what Roku would be doing. Mm -hmm. But still the whole thing just, 
this is not a good look. Yeah, not a good look, but uh, I think the most disturbing part is if this works the way I think it does, uh, it would be disturbingly easy for others to, to implement because what I think they're doing here is just monitoring uh, HDMI, HDMI CEC pass-through controls here. That's probably exactly what they're doing. Yeah. So if they can get through with it, uh, well, Google TVs and Fire TVs could do the same thing relatively easy. Well, they'd have to license the patent from Roku. Oh, that, that's a... That's a um, yeah, that might be the most insidious part. Yeah. All right. Oh, here, here's a good one. I, I gave you the Apple TV example. And a uh, better example would be you've plugged uh, a Nintendo Switch or other gaming console into your television, uh-huh. uh, HDMI. You pause the game because you need to look at the screen to figure out what it is. You pause, and now you have an ad instead. Yeah. So you have to unpause the game to get the ad to go away. So when you went to actually see what's on the screen for the game in a pause state, you can't do it. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, the voice stream reader situation, this situation, and, and admittedly, this one's not happening <clears throat> right now. The, the situation we had with Roku, I think a week or two ago, that is happening now. I, I just am fascinated at these companies that seem to be so completely tone deaf for what the tech press is talking about, what is happening, what the discussions are on social media about this kind of conduct, where there's there's so little discussion, there's so little explanation, it just pops out and you know this is what we can do, you know to to, to quote something that was recent, you know just just because they can, they never stop to think whether they should or not. Yeah, the the one thing. I mean, if you add in the car companies basically writing you out to insurance companies, one thing is clear here. Uh, You have a license to operate their property in their minds. You do not own these things. Interesting point, Ben. Interesting point, especially since we've talked here a number of times about how we really don't own the content we think we do when we purchase it. We just rent it under particular licenses. Um, when did Roku start making televisions? They really don't. They make the operating system. Then PCL, Hisense, a right. uh, bunch of other places make the televisions. But it's, but it's been so ju- Just for clarification... The televisions that have the Roku label on the front, branded as a Roku television, they're manufactured by TCL and a couple other companies. I didn't know there was. I haven't bought a TV in a while. I didn't know there was such a thing. Yeah. Yep. You can buy a a Roku television. Well, as long as you can not buy a Roku television, I'm good. (laughs) You're good. Yes. You're good. Yeah. Yes, I have one of the TCL ones in my bedroom. You mean a Roku? Uh, TCL Roku, yes. Yeah, I have a TCL uh, Roku that, in the living room. And it's, yeah. you know, it's great, except that now I start to worry, you know, what are they going to do to it? Um, because it's there have already been a couple occasions where my internet, internet service was interrupted and therefore my TV service was interrupted Excuse me. My streaming TV services were interrupted because you know the Roku was not communicating back with the world, and that really, when, when that happened, it's like, so exactly what are you doing with the data that you're getting off of? You know, the fact that I'm watching Channel Eight right now and Channel Ten later, and then maybe flip over to a streaming app of some kind. You know, Chuck, this is exactly why. I dread the day my ancient Sony Bravia television dies. It is not a smart TV. You can't buy a TV anymore that's not a smart TV. Mm-hmm. I do not want that at all. Now, um, I believe Samsung is one of the companies where you have to plug the TV into your internet connection 
Um, otherwise you can't actually finish your setup. You're like, yeah, use it. Um, so I use Wi-Fi. I, I, it's yeah. See, I don't want a television on my network. Spying. I don't want a TV spying on me, Jeff. Just out with it. It's <laughs> direct. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, that's part yeah, of it. But then, but then the other part is, I I don't want a TV that has the crappy slow performance that you get with smart televisions because you're using a TV processor to drive all this software. I want a really nice display that if it dies, I just take it out, set the new one in, plug my, my box that I'm actually using in this mm-hmm. case, an Apple TV into it. And I keep going and, yeah. uh, and I don't need this on my network. And, and you're right. I don't need it spying <clears throat> on me either. Well, maybe one day with third-party apps, all you need is an Apple Vision Pro and say nuts to all the uh, smart TV manufacturers. We and I'm in I'm, in the, I'm in the same camp as you, you know, for whenever our TVs, you know, are in need of replacement, that I don't want a smart TV. You know, and we, we've talked about this before. There's this company called the Trade Desk, ticker symbol TTD, uh, where you know, basically they've They've made uh, their whole business on helping companies, you know, integrate. Uh, if you're watching, you know, uh, something at work, and then on your browser and elsewhere, and tying all that together to know it's Jeff or Eric or Jim, um, and you know, they've been going gangbusters in you know, the past eighteen months or so after collapsing post COVID, blah 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 blah. Um, you know, by the rise of you know advertising opportunities for smart TV. So, you know, your smart TV is just another um, attack surface uh, mm-hmm. for people who want to inject advertisements. And, and I found ones to make it even worse. Right. And I found this thing with uh, you know, that, uh, you know, it, it's, it looks like uh, The Verge, you know, is just stirring up clickbait uh, because this patent was applied for in 2022, has not yet been issued. Uh, but um, you know it, it, it is concerning, and I think to to Ben's point, um, if and when it gets issued, and other people want to do it, do they have to pay them royalties? Don't know. Is there prior art on this? Don't know. I certainly know that you know controlling what goes into a TV through an HDMI port, you know, you know that's not patentable there's all sorts of prior art about that through you know other uh, switchers and you know other devices so um you know interesting it, you know you can get you all sorts of riled up and you know you know you know <laughs> raise your fist at uh, the powers bit that be but i think until we actually see something it's uh it, it's speculation and you know maybe conspiracy theories at the moment Fair point, Mark. Un, un, unlike, 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 you know, smart TVs smart, spying on you and things. That's that's real. That's here, there, today. But you know, taking control of your, you know, TV when you're not watching something and blasting ads through an you know, unused HDMI port. Uh, that's all future science fiction stuff at the moment. And and you bring up a fair point because Roku has been in the news in a negative fashion. So maybe somebody went looking and found this. Um, mm. So. I'm sorry. Would somebody do that? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I need to catch up here with the chat room. Cletus says, I install a ton of Roku TVs in cheap rentals. Um, uh, Barry says, I think the ad ecosphere is out of control. Ads at the gas pumps, ads in the public restrooms. Yes, I've seen video screens above urinals at truck stops. Where will it end? <laughs> and, yep, seen the same thing, Barry. You know, it's it's kind of amazing if wasn't that if one can, of the themes in Demolition Man? Like, you could not get away from advertising, no matter where you were, what you did. I, I'd rather have the three seashells. A fair, totally fair. Wow, I, Jeff, I'd forgotten all about that, but I think you're right. Also, Taco Bell was the uh, the height of cuisine. Yeah, I'll take it. Yeah. Um, Jeff Brad says, I'm pretty sure there are, no, there are non-smart TVs still for sale. Probably not a model this crowd would buy. Um, and Cletus says, Westinghouse and Insignias should be dumb. 
So, well, insignia is right out. I, I I say that because uh, I I am not impressed with the quality of insignia televisions. Yeah. Well, I did see you know, a couple of weeks ago announced you know, Walmart's buying Vizio. You know, yeah. and do you think they'll offer you know you know dumb you know, unsmart uh, unspying you know fo- you know nope. TVs absolutely or? not doubt it. It's, I mean, Vizio is is a a, a low cost. Um, it's they're cheap ass TVs, just straight up. And uh, part of what makes them so cheap is that uh, they are smart TVs. So y- you can go ahead and supplement the cost of that television through through everything else that that you're collecting or or feeding back through it. Yeah. Um, I cannot imagine Walmart changing that. So do you, is the wisdom of the panel that no manufacturer will cater to you know, people who will pay you know, more money, whatever that amount is, a you know, dollar, a hundred dollars, 500, a thousand dollars more for a TV that does not spy on them and does not uh, you know, expose them to undesirable content. I mean, if, if it's that big a deal, and there's that a mark a much feel in the market. I'm sure some manufacturer will respond and offer an appropriate television. Yeah, well, there's That's a separate proper. market for that, and uh, it's called uh, uh, computer displays. Yeah, Eric, what? That's what I was going to say. Is it yeah. sounds like a monitor to me? Yeah, I mean, if if, if you if at this point. Realistically speaking, if you want to go and get a uh, a television that is what we expected from old school days, just just like a big display, you're buying a computer display and uh, plugging in your your Apple TV or Roku or whatever or Fire iPad Stick or Mac or something. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and you're getting all your content through something else that just feeds to the display. So, so did anyone else on the panel have the experience Chuck did where uh, you know, a down internet connection you deprived them of watching some show on their TV? Crickets. Yeah. Frequently. You must well, not have had a, a down internet connection. Sorry you, for me, Chuck. Are you talking about <laughs> terrestrial TV? Because I haven't watched that and. Who knows how long? No, no, no. Cable, you know, some sort of cable, cable enabled smart TV. Well, most of what I watch is on the internet. So yeah, if the internet stops. No, 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 no. It's, it's the device itself was not connected to the internet. Not <clears throat> that it didn't have an internet connection. Yeah. The, the, the device could not check in basically is what it amounts oh. to. Right. So, but, so then the television gonna watch? could, couldn't be used for anything. Until it's until it insisted it was that I restored the internet connection. Could you could you serve to it? You know, from something locally, Chuck. Nope, zero, nothing. It was just nope. just dead weight. Just yep, just just you know, would not would not let you exit. The only thing I could do is turn it on, turn it off. But as soon as I turned it off, back on, it came right back to the same place. Please connect to the internet. Even if we want to rewatch some of your beautiful Mac, beautifully edited Mac Voices shows that you created, you cannot serve it locally to that device. I, I, Mark, now that's a fair question. I, I didn't take that much time to test it. Okay. Maybe I could have switched to an HDMI input, and and maybe I could have gotten signal in through that. I don't know. I didn't try. Okay. But as far as using the the television as it was intended, no. So, so for, and chat as room intended, been, does that mean a terrestrial television? It meant it was. It, I was running to cable, Jim, because I don't. Okay. On that TV, and, I don't and have your a terrestrial cable. Doesn't option. come in through HDMI. The cable does come in through HDMI. So no reason to think some other HDMI input would be any different. Fair point. I don't know. I'm so I'm not willing to condemn them. Condemn it that. Oh, far, I'll condemn just, them for you. you, you, know, you thank, you, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Jeff. You're taking Thanks, Jeff. The, yeah. 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 Oh, he'll actually bring the wrecking ball. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And I'm going to be dressed for it, too. 
Demolition Man. No, Wrecking Ball. Oh, okay. Um, so the Chadron Barry says, a search for non-smart TVs at Best Buy returns 37 items. I asked him to find out, you know, what sizes. And he came back and said 19 to 15, 55 inches. A lot are insignia, Best Buy's brand. There are some Samsung, several other brands I've never heard of. Oh, and there's also a 75 incher from Samsung. So that's that's really interesting. I don't know what obviously you know what the specs are. I do find that surprising and very interesting. Thank you for doing that that uh, legwork. Yeah. Yeah, I I had tried to, a couple of years ago. I tried to find pretty much that exact uh, type of TV for my parents because I knew I'd be running it through a box rather than any kind of smart system. Um, I found a. 43 inch scepter with a good screen. The speakers are so terrible. I have to use the sound. I had to hook them up with a sound bar. But I mean, it runs HDR or 4K HDR through a box just fine. It's a good. It's a good panel dis- display. Not so much a great TV. Hmm. Chuck, um, you need to ask Dave about the link he he dropped in our private chat. Yeah. Okay. Gonna, let me get to, let me let me do this, Dave, and then I'll get to you. Um, <laughs> so so Brad says the Samsung Viewfinity S9 doubles as an AirPlay receiver, so it becomes a smart device without the computer part. Okay. Interesting. Interesting point. Um, Quita says just don't set up smart TV. Set it up as an Apple TV box and do everything through it, meaning the Apple TV box. If the smart TV will let you get to that point, Cletus, yes. Yeah, yeah, some of them you. require you to have an internet connection just to turn it on and do anything. Yeah. Right. Right. And that's, I think that, Jeff, I think we finally come around to the point that I was making about mine, that I had to have an internet connection or it wouldn't let me do much of anything. Yeah. I am so sorry, yeah, Dave. Too- oh. Ben, Ben, okay. quick, and then Dave. Okay. Um, I had my TCL for over three years before I figured out how to go directly to the Apple TV box. They don't make it easy. No, See, you're that's right. Just crappy. You're right. Trying to figure out what your default input is, I had to Google it and step, but it's but some article stepped me through it. You're right, Ben. Dave. Yeah, this is. This was going back uh, about a, almost a year. This was this uh, lame brain service called Tele TV. Um, that uh, okay, you can get a free TV, entice people to buy buy get this free TV, and then you know they had over five hundred thousand TVs. I I I uh, I filled it out, but never heard a word back, which was fine with me because I really I just thought more about just to take one for the team and look at it, and see what it did. But if you look at this thing, it's it, this is you you are in. You are forced to have advertising, and there's a separate screen that's like kind of a, a ticker that's at the bottom of the screen yeah. that that has all kinds of ads too. So imagine that having to. Uh, you think the smart TV is a pain? To think I, I, you wonder if this kind of business model would would evolve. I mean, I haven't seen anything else on this since it's been, like I said, over a year, and uh, and I think all they exhausted all their TVs. I just don't know how this is a money making business model either, other than advertising. And this is one that they were going to penalize you some ungodly amount if you didn't leave the TV on or had the TV on or were watching ads or something. I forget exactly what the deal some, was, Dave. But some crazy thing, yeah, like that. Yeah, it yeah. has to be your primary television. It's your primary TV, yeah. You can't That's cover right. up the the display. Ben, you read all the TOS, right? Yeah. Um, I don't remember all for- of it, but I I was I was basically selected for one of the free ones. Oh, I read right, the okay. TO I read the TOS to the point where I said, uh uh-uh, uh, I ain't doing this. <laughs> yeah, it's oh, stuff well, like you, well, you well, could you cover you up did, the display. I didn't read the TOS, but I mean what, what would happen? You get it like uh, uh, basically jail, which is <laughs> say if you used an Apple TV or instead of their service, you were in violation. And what are they gonna do? <laughs> That's not all I know. Fine yeah. Or make you pay for the TV. No, they're set. going to turn off your show. Well, how would they know? How would they know? 
they know. because it's phoning home all the time. It has so to be connected to the internet yeah, and on all the time. The TV won't work without it. And there's probably some kind of camera somewhere that says, Oh that yeah. It, it had cameras something. to, to, so like you couldn't do stuff that would obscure the advertising part of the screen. Uh, that, that would be a violation of the terms of service. So it's not like you could get it and think, oh, I'll outsmart them. I'll just cover this up. Yeah, so there's cameras and microphones in that television that were supposedly monitoring all the time. Plus, it's monitoring all the activity. It's phoning everything home. And, uh, yeah, Ben, it's a wonder your hair isn't white after reading those TOS. There, I, 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 it was light reading. There's the TOS. <laughs> oh, thank you, Dave. That's so good. if I can make... Uh, you know, a, a comment that I will mix many metaphors and you know impressions together, but they're making this thing, you know, and you know, um, who are they making for? If if they're making for people who can't afford a TV, what's the value of all the stuff that they learn about because they don't have any money? You know, if they're making it, you know, for more affluent <laughs> buyers who hate all this Point. stuff, you know, why are they? Why are they thinking that a free TV that has all these bad provisions would be appealing to them? I think uh, those are fair questions. It, it, it's, 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 it's not a TV. It's a data broker device that's disguised as a TV. Hey, Ben, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You know, the, the other thing everyone should It's think a data about. broker and device, but for what quality brokers? Is it is it, is it is it crappy? Uh, is it crappy uh, email database? You know, from a publicly traded company. You know, with ZI in their ticker, or is it you know high quality data that got acquired by you know, HubSpot? You know, I mean, there's all sorts of there's good data and crappy data out in the world. Someone's willing to pay for any of it, Eric. Yeah, I, the other thing is, you know, where. Where would people put a TV like this? So if you have, um, uh, um, you know, like a, a nursing home, a retirement home, a rec room, uh, a lounge in some business or whatever, where you don't want to have to go out and pay lots of money for a TV, someone's willing to hand it to you, and <laughs> it just sits there soaking up everything that's happening and what everybody's watching. And unless there's somebody paying attention to say, no, that's not appropriate in this venue. You know, I, I could see monitoring TV starting to show up all over the place. Yeah. And but again, okay. turn that around on the other side, you know, what value do you get if you're seeing, you know, somebody who is in, you know, uh, Who's in a nursing home or elderly facility, and you know they're not uh, they're not able to go out and buy something and actually enjoy any of the stuff that you're going to be advertising to them. You know that that makes no sense. You know, you're targeting I, I, every care worker on the planet. Pardon me. Say again. You're targeting every care worker on the planet. Every nurse that comes through, every aide that comes through, every person who visits, everyone who you know, there every shift. There's another round of people. I understand, but you know, from my experience a year ago, having had uh, elective surgery, they're not they're they're in and out. They're not watching whatever the hell is on the TV in the room. So, yeah, but Mark, but but Mark, the attention span there. I agree with you, but the attention span there is probably not a lot different than the the video screens I see at some gas pumps or the audio programming that's being pumped to me at the, sorry that's being broadcast or. Played to me at the at the at the uh, at the gas pump, you know my attention is clearly somewhere else. But somewhere in there, you know, I'm getting the message to go inside and buy, you know, the the Slim the Jim's. big cup. Well, I was Slim trying Jim. to avoid any. I was trying to avoid <laughs> any uh, brand names, Jeff. But, um, you know, but but it, it's it's telling me you, know, you you should go in for a snack. We've got you know great this, great that, mm -hmm. and you know, the, they're planning that that image or that my, that mental picture in. So don't you yeah. want a hot dog <laughs> that's been on those heat rollers for <laughs> seven hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, Good but, but again, you know, I, again, I think the, I, I think the thing here is that um, getting junk data is worse than having no data. 
you know, it's the old guy guy go garbage in, garbage out. You know, so yeah. um mm-hmm. oh, Webb, you've been quiet you, you yeah, you've been quiet track. tonight, Webb. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> time to retire. Yeah, un- the, the, time to retire uh, undefeated. <laughs> there, 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 there's a, a couple things I've been looking at the telly thing. I'd heard about it, you know, a year ago and didn't think anything of it. But uh, reading the terms of service, uh, it's interesting, but it's also kind of standard. You know, it's uh, you got to indemnify us if you do something bad. Uh, you got to, uh, um, you got to have an account for it to work. Um, uh, it'd be interesting if I owned a, a sports bar, you know, it, I wanted to put a dozen of these things all over the place, Well, you can't do that because it has to be an individual. It can't be a, a business. So, um, it, it's just interesting. There, there was a comment that I wanted to make earlier and I don't want to go back. Um, when we were talking about the, um, the Roku thing. And then we get into all these uh, uh, conversations about uh, uh, the rights of the stuff that you record. I remember I had a um, a cable uh, box that had a built-in DVR to it, and they had a a disagreement with I think CBS. So they pulled CBS off. It was Spectrum was my uh, cable provider, knocked off CBS, and they also went inside my DVR. And pulled all my CBS content out of it too, and that Ooh, surprised wow. me that they did that at the same time. So, um, hmm. it, yeah, they, and they had the right to do it. So um, it, it just surprised me. So, and then when, when they came back and uh, uh, made nice with CBS and Spectrum get, played nice with each other, I didn't get that content back. And it was you know, so so I missed a few episodes of The Big Bang Theory or something like that. So, um, so um. I think you have a problem seeing that now. Yeah, it's all over the place right now. But anyway, yeah. you're right. I'm quiet yeah. tonight, so I'm just no, I, take, I, taking it all in. Yeah, I, I wanted to, to see the the Ginsburg Joiner Battle Royale. That's what I wanted to see tonight, and I'm not getting there. So well, <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're sorry. We're sorry. <laughs> you know, that's what I want to see too. All right, let's sit back and wait. <laughs> uh, hold on a second. <laughs> Let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> Dave, you were going to say something before. Yeah, I was going to put another us. point to that about um, uh, about that. You know, TiVo and uh, Comcast had a bit of a battle too because uh, TiVo owned the patent on you having the ability of being able to uh, do future recordings from your app on your phone. Because I would do that all the time until I finally got rid of them. Um, that you could. You actually could go in and you know schedule something from your phone, so you you had it uh, ready to ready to go. And there was there was a you know they were they were having some battles with that until I guess when Altivo kind of just faded off into the sunset and they they kind of forgot about it. And I don't know if they settled that or not, but uh, there was another thing with the DVR I remember that that was with with their X1 technology. Mm-hmm. Um. Since we've, we're talking about security, privacy, and all, I'm going to throw this one in. Um, anybody remember Sunbird? It was another one of those services to bring iMessage to Android. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Well, it's, they're trying to make a comeback. <laughs> and that's about all I can say. It's like, what is with your obsession of trying to crack, crack iMessage? You know, for for Android, it um, brings to me mind that Monty Python scheme with the Black Knight, you know, who gets his arms cut off. Oh, it's just a flesh wound in his leg, in his other leg, in his other arm, and you know, they just uh, don't know when to stop. You know, they're just on a mission, and they just keep going until the very end. To join their wait list, so I think they saw Beeper just get purchased, and they want money too. Yeah. What Beeper got purchased by Automatic, didn't they? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you know how so, much Ben? Uh not off the top of my head. It 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 was a, a shockingly high amount of money for for what Beeper is. It was like uh like triple digit millions. Really? If if I'm remembering correctly. 
and automatic the publisher of wordpress why yes. what what's this what's the synergy there why would they want them messaging uh, uh automatic already has uh other messaging uh platforms that they bought so it it probably ties in to that somewhere keep in mind automatic they're not just wordpress and and actually they license mm -hmm. wordpress from the WordPress Foundation and uh, in <clears throat> Automatic, they have several other companies under their umbrella. Like even WooCommerce is owned by Automatic. And uh, and if I knew, you're not yeah, sure, I knew that. I knew that. Yeah, WooCommerce is big in the WordPress world. <laughs> well, yeah, well, it's big in the retail world. And you buy stuff online, and and uh, and there's a good chance that at some point uh, WooCommerce is touching it. There's like two biggies out there. But um, there's 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 a lot of stuff that Automatic is doing, where ha having the technologies for messaging, uh, th this is a strategic move for them. Mm -hmm. So they want be million. so they want to they, so they spent a hundred or more million dollars to be dicks in the Apple universe. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, one hundred twenty-five million. Yeah. Well, I, I don't think that's their intent. I'm sorry, you were talking, and it's one of the few times. So I'm going to shut up so you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I just I'm wondering if Sunbird, you know, saw this, and they figured that okay, our main competitor in this market is out, so now we're going to try to step back in. And we'll take we'll take fifty million dollars. <laughs> yeah, I think Ben nailed it. They're stepping it up so they can get bought. I don't know. Well, that's yeah, one strategy. That, you know? mm -hmm. I mean, that said, um, Beeper did have uh, other messaging services before they tried to get into the uh, faux iMessage game. But, Ben, what was their market share, say, compared to Signal? That's a good question. I'm. They have any measurable market share? We need an Android or person. What, or what's their yes. market share compared to WhatsApp? I mean, this is this is the thing we talked about this a couple of weeks ago about the you know the the nonsense you know DOJ claim against Apple you know and how bad you know and how terrible they are relative to iMessage and not allowing end users you know to have secure communications. What about at WhatsApp? You know the leading you know leading tool in the category. Yeah, aka the nine hundred pound gorilla outside the outside of North America. Right, and even within North America, I know a lot of uh, I know a lot of people who use that. You know, it says you know all all my Facebook friends are on that. I use that. You know, I, I could use I could use iMessage, but my Facebook friends doesn't work out. I use WhatsApp. What's that? So if they have if they if you, oh geez. so if they have a, a dominant market share, why isn't somebody going after them for monopolistic behavior? Ah, oh, good question. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help it. I just <laughs> in the EU they are. What they're being gone after, Ben? Yeah. Oh, now WhatsApp okay. is definitely uh listed as a gate a gatekeeper under the DMA. Hmm. Where uh, iMessage is not. Hmm. Right. Oh, my. It seems like we're spending a lot of time talking about regulatory things. Um, yeah. So. It, yep. I mean, Upgrade went to the point where they introduced their new segment, Lawyer Up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that's awesome and sad. Oh. Yeah. Well, Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. 
you will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.